to give us a sense of the visit, uh, we have with us uh, forensic officer Shivinay Kwat. Also joining us on the dais is uh, Dr. Asar Saeed, Secretary CPV and OIA in the Ministry of External Affairs, as well as Dr. Pradeep Rajpurohit, Joint Secretary looking after West Asia and North Africa Division in the Ministry. Sir, may I hand over the floor to you? Thank you very much and uh, good afternoon to uh, all of your friends uh, for presence here this afternoon for the special briefing of Honorable Prime Minister's upcoming visit to the United States and to the Arab Republic of Egypt. First, about the United States, Prime Minister is visiting US uh, on 21st through 23rd of June at the invitation of His Excellency uh, President Biden uh, and the First Lady, uh, Dr. Jill Biden. Uh, what I would do is give you a, a brief run uh, overall structure of the program outline, uh, try to sketch a bit of context, uh, key elements uh, which currently uh, resonate in the relationship, and then go on to speak about very briefly about the program in Egypt. Firstly, this will be Prime Minister's first official state visit to the United States. PM has earlier visited US roughly six times, both in bilateral capacities as also for multilateral events. First about the program, the first leg of his program in the US is in New York, he, uh, which starts on the morning of the 21st with a celebration of the International Day of Yoga at the UN headquarters in the morning of the 21st. Uh, you would recall that the United Nations General Assembly had adopted a resolution proclaiming June 21st as the International Day of uh, Yoga. Uh, while in New York, Honorable Prime Minister will also meet a cross-section of prominent personalities and leaders. From there, he departs for Washington on 21st itself, uh, where uh, his program for the Washington leg commences. On the first day of his arrival in Washington, D.C., on 21st, the first key engagement would be an event that is focused on skilling, uh, skilling for future, which essentially would try to bring out the key complementarities uh, and the objectives that both systems seek to promote and achieve in the field of uh, skilling and capacity building. On the same day, on 21st, uh, there is expected to be, uh, there will be a private engagement between President Biden and Prime Minister. On 22nd June, which is the second day of the program in Washington, that's the day of formal bilateral meetings, essentially would have four or five key components. The first component being the ceremonial welcome at the White House. Second component being a set of bilateral meetings between the two leaders as also the accompanying delegations. The third component is Honorable Prime Minister's scheduled address to the US Congress and the congressional reception thereafter. And the concluding component for June 22nd uh, would be the ceremonial state dinner uh, hosted by the Honorable President and the First Lady in honor of Prime Minister Shri Narendra Modi. The day three of the Washington leg, which is June 23rd, uh, Prime Minister's program again would have four or five key components. The first being uh, his interaction, one-to-one -one interaction with select CEOs spread throughout the day. Uh, thereafter, Prime Minister will also be hosted 
by the U.S. Vice President and Secretary of State Anthony Blinken at the State Luncheon, which is part of the official state visit. Prime Minister will then interact with prominent professional personalities as also leaders from cross-section of the society at an event at the Kennedy Center. Prime Minister's last engagement in Washington, D.C. will be an interaction with the community leaders immediately after the Kennedy Center event, whereafter the Prime Minister will depart for Egypt. In terms of uh, substantive context of the U.S. visit, if I could just take a minute to uh, highlight some of the key components on which we will continue to speak to you in coming days as the visit unfolds and depending on Honorable Prime Minister's interaction day to day during his visit to the U.S. Yeah. The first is a milestone in our relationship between the two countries. You heard Honorable External Affairs Minister say yesterday, it's a very significant visit, very important visit, a visit on which there is a genuine and widespread deep interest in the United States. Two, the visit has, uh, visit is very rich in both form and in substance. Uh, three, key component would be the leadership connect during the visit between the two countries. Uh, four, naturally, uh, uh, an important element of the visit will also be uh, discussion on the bilateral relationships, the, uh, the uh, line of effort, the uh, objectives that we set for ourselves in terms of uh, looking at next uh, series of transformative agenda items in, in years ahead. Uh, and in that, I guess the effort would also be to build a network in which these new domains of partnership could be properly positioned. Uh, I must uh, mention here that uh, Honorable Sri Narendra Modi ji would be among the rare few leaders, world leaders, to have been accorded the honor to address the U.S. Congress more than once. Uh, clearly, uh, another key context which has uh, always continued is a strong uh, and widespread degree of bipartisan support in the U.S. Congress to the strengthening of this relationship. In um, terms of uh, key elements uh, uh, of the relationship, many of which would uh, feature very prominently during this visit. Uh, one, of course, as I said, is the is the political connect at the leadership level, a uh, high level of and very intense level of political exchanges has been one of the key features of our relationship. Just within this month, we have had three very high profile visits from US uh, to India including of uh, most recently, which is the National Security Advisor of the US, Jake Sullivan. Prior to that, uh, Defense Secretary of the US, uh, Excellency Lloyd Austin. And uh, we also had the privilege of hosting Secretary of State Blinken uh, earlier this year. The, uh, the second uh, key component which has been uh, a uh, very uh, strong pillar of our relationship has been strong trade and investment partnership. Uh, whether you look at the quantum or bilateral trade touching close to $200 billion or the strong flow of capital on both sides. Three, the technology component. And technology component uh, interfaces with many other domains. So technology itself um, interfaces in the telecom area, in the space area, in the manufacturing uh, domain. Uh, also, it a uh, lot of it also as a as an as a triangulation of technology manufacturing uh, and investment. A uh, lot of this translates into that. Uh, 
within the technology uh, realm the critical and emerging technologies has been the most recent area of focus an area which uh, presents itself with uh, really very exciting opportunities for bilateral engagement in months and years ahead the next key component which uh, which will also be showcased prominently during the visit is the bilateral defense cooperation it has been a critical pillar of our engagement and within that uh, uh, a new element this year we expect this during this visit we expect is the progress on defense industrial cooperation roadmap which essentially uh, uh, takes us on the path of how uh, the in defense industries on both sides can partner closely uh, both in not just in the field of co-production co-development but also do it in a manner that the uh, supply chains on both sides in this field the industrial ecosystem broadly speaking in the field of defense could uh, talk to each other could cooperate with each other far more uh, intensely uh, the uh, another key component always a very vibrant uh, robust and dynamic component of uh, our relationship uh, in many ways a strong driver of the relationship is also the uh, uh, diaspora uh, prime minister's interface with diaspora we have close to 5 million strong uh, uh, indian diaspora in the us uh, the, uh, which which contributes enormously and very richly uh, to the growth uh, the substance and the strength of the relationship uh, another key element uh, uh, a part of it uh, i uh, i referred to in my uh, early on in my remarks is the whole domain of uh, skilling and mobility uh, in some some cases independent in some cases linked uh, that recast uh, those would be the broad uh, outline contours of honorable prime minister's visit to the us in terms of the program the context in which visit is taking place key elements uh, not just of the relationship but also uh, which will uh, uh, feature prominently during the prime minister's visit uh, moving on to the second leg of honorable prime minister's uh, visit uh, this would be to egypt at the invitation of uh, his excellency abdul fateh al sisi the president of Arab Republic of Egypt the state visit to Egypt will be uh, on June 24 25 uh, it is worth mentioning here that this will be honorable prime minister's first visit to Egypt and i might also mention that this would be the first official bilateral visit of the indian prime minister to egypt since 1997 there have been visits in between but they have mostly been for the uh, multilateral or plurilateral events you would all recall that most recently uh, the egyptian president had paid a state visit to india when he graced our republic day earlier in the year as the chief guest uh, at this stage uh, prime minister is expected to reach Cairo in the afternoon of June uh, 24th where after where his first interaction will be uh, uh, with the India unit uh, this unit is a is a uh, select unit of uh, high level ministers which uh, the honorable president of Egypt had constituted after his return from India i think it was in march sometime that it was constituted so prime minister's first interaction will be with this unit uh, i must mention here that uh, uh, over the last uh, several months uh, since the visit of uh, the president of egypt we have seen uh, intense level of ministerial level political exchanges between the uh, two countries uh, excellent affairs minister himself Uh, honorable uh, raksha mantri ji uh, and minister of environment have traveled to egypt 
we have had similarly at least three to four ministers uh, from the Egyptian government who have visited uh, India. Even as we speak, uh, a ministerial level delegation uh, led by the uh, chairperson of the Suez Canal Authority is in India. Uh, clearly shows you the uh, uh, extent of very sharp focus that both India and Egypt are placing on strengthening all aspects of their relationship. After that interaction with the uh, with the uh, India unit, Prime Minister will have a, a interaction with the with the small uh, uh, Indian community that is there in Egypt, uh, and will uh, likely also meet some of the prominent personalities uh, in Egypt. His next day. Uh, will begin with a visit to Al-Hakim Mosque. It is the 11th century mosque, which was refurbished, uh, renovated by the Bora community, Bora community. And the visit to Al-Hakim Mosque will be followed by a visit to the Heliopolis War Grave Cemetery to pay tribute to the Indian soldiers who made the supreme sacrifice fighting for Egypt during the First World War. Prime Minister will have official engagement at the Presidency of Egypt, including bilateral talks with President of Egypt and signing of various MOUs and agreements on that day. Thereafter, Prime Minister would return to uh, India. Just a brief uh, few words uh, on the on the key elements of substance, I just referred to the intense level of political exchanges. Uh, I, I must also add that most recently, the, the, uh, the Grand Mufti uh, of Egypt was in India on a very, very uh, successful visit. As you all know, uh, Egypt has also been invited as a special guest during the uh, India's G20 presidency. Uh, this is a very quick reciprocal visit coming uh, just within six months of President Sisi's visit to India. Uh, we do uh, uh, expect and uh, are confident that the visit of Honorable Prime Minister of Egypt will uh, not just uh, uh, ensure continuing momentum uh, to the relationship between our two countries, but will also help it expand to new areas of trade and economic engagement between our two countries. I would stop here, and if there are any questions, we'll try and take them. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, sir. Um, the ground rules, please introduce yourself and the organization that you represent. I know there will be a lot of interest, so we'll try to also limit the number of questions because Foreign Secretary has other engagements. Let me try to start with you there. Yeah. Uh, Secretary, good morning. Rishya from Times Now. So, two questions. Uh, one, uh, there are reports that Indian Prime Minister has written to G20 counterparts regarding African Union. Uh, I'm coming to this topic only. I'm African just... Union uh, thing. Will that be discussed in the US? What will be discussed the in the US? African Union permanent membership to G20 that Prime Minister has written. Okay. And uh, so if we can have some details of CEOs uh, who will be meeting Prime Minister in the United States. CEOs who is meeting? A meeting. Uh, Prime Minister is holding meetings with okay. CEOs. Yes, you have the same question. Next, there was another hand. Yeah, go ahead. Please. Microphone. Vinay Dixit from Newsgate. Sir, I'm interested to know, will there be an agreement on LCA Mark II engine manufacturing, co-manufacturing here in India? And is the GE1. that part of the defense uh, part? Is that the GE1 in the that's, uh, that's going to, will that be part of the uh, bilateral defense co cooperation uh, production in the long run? And is there a quid pro quo from Americans to us to join NATO? Huh? NATO? Uh, as one of the partners in Quad has already done, uh, the Japan. I, I'm not sure your statement makes too much sense, but I'll try to glue it. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. There. Um, Mujib Masha from the New York Times. Uh, Foreign Secretary, just a question of clarification on the Prime Minister's June 23rd schedule. The last two events 
Um, the Kennedy Center event is not the diaspora event. The diaspora event is the community leaders event that comes after that. Um, and can you tell us a little bit about the sort of the scale of the diaspora event? Is it going to be similar to the one on during Prime Minister's last visit, or is this a more selective interaction? Thank you. Yeah, please. So, Vijalakshmi, who India TV, se, aapne apne mein bilateral defense cooperation ki baat ki hai, aur critical pillar hum dono ke mein bata hai, to kin kin defense masodo par is visit ke doran charcha ya hastakshar ho sakta hai? Outcomes ki bojana. Ek aur last hand, yeah, yeah, one second. Smita Sharma, work independently. Foreign Secretary, uh, A, we are hearing reports that some members of the US Congress, including Democrat lawmakers, will possibly issue statements on issues of human rights. And there are some protests that are being planned during the visit. Uh, has India taken this up with the other side? And the issue of... Sorry, Myanmar sorry. What, sorry. Civil no, war. I didn't get your question. What? What is your oh, question? No. There are reports that people will write letters. We should take it up in advance. That doesn't make sense. Uh, that doesn't make sense. Discussion. Please have a specific question. So there could be a moment of embarrassment if there are protests are planned and it happens. So, so is the Indian side taking that into account at all? So what is your question? There are planned protests during the Prime Minister's visit okay. on issues of human rights, including some Democrat lawmakers who have suggested there will be issued statements. Okay, fair enough. Does India have a view of this? And on the Myanmar civil war situation, which seems to be worsening, uh, because that's one area where India and US definitely do seem to have a different position. Uh, is that something that's going to come up at all? Yeah, I think so. we'll hold for that. No, uh, you want to take more questions? Sir? Or, or do we? Okay, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, ma'am, go ahead. Vedika Sood from CNN. Uh, my question is, uh, is the Indian government hoping or is the prime minister hoping to sign any weapon deals that might reduce India's reliance on Russian arms. Thank you. I'll come back in the next one. Thank you very much. Uh, let me just uh, bunch up uh, the set of questions relating to defense. LCA Mark II, Raksha Sahyog, weapon deal, and put it in a, in a context in which uh, the defense relationship between India and US is, is, is placed. Look, if you look at the uh, complete matrix of India-US defense engagement, defense partnership, you will find that it is very robust, it is very dynamic, it has all the significant elements that, uh, uh, that make it so important. Uh, uh, we conduct a large number of bilateral military exercises, both bilateral uh, as also uh, regional in nature. Our armed forces of the two countries have all kinds of staff-to-staff uh, uh, -staff engagement that takes place between the two sides. India also uh, is an important uh, uh, deployer of the uh, US equipment and platforms. Some of it are used by India. Uh, we also have uh, significantly uh, an important objective and an effort and an ongoing uh, component of it in terms of what the two defense and industrial system can do, which focuses on research, collaboration, and production opportunities and production cooperation, uh, uh, mainly also under the Prime Minister's Made in India uh, campaign. So if you look at the uh, defense partnership, uh, and I mentioned it in my remarks, that the defense industrial production roadmap that uh, the uh, two countries have been discussing for some time and uh, which would uh, uh, hopefully uh, uh, be a, one of the very key outcomes during this visit, uh, essentially focuses on all aspects of uh, defense co-production, co-development. And what is important is it also talks about how the defense industrial ecosystems 
uh, of the two countries could cooperate much better. How the supply lines in the field of the defense industries could also interface uh, with each other much better. So uh, I don't think it would be appropriate to uh, really single out individual elements and link it to a, a certain uh, sort of predefined objective in that sense. I think it is important to position uh, each element of the defense relationship uh, uh, very uh, uh, correctly in the overall network of defense relationship and also the way defense relationship is positioned in the larger overall relationship. So that's the, uh, that's the element of uh, defense uh, which is coming out uh, uh, from the questions. Uh, times now uh, and uh, I think Yeshi your ठीक है देखिए जो मैंने अभी संक्षिप्त में यही कहा कि जहाँ तक भारत अमेरिका के रक्षा सहयोग का प्रश्न है उसको एक सीमित दृष्टि से एक पर्टिकुलर इक्विपमेंट प्लेटफॉर्म के नजरिए से देखने की बजाय उसका फ्रेमवर्क जिसमें हमें उसे देखना चाहिए वो ये है कि भारत यूएस के रक्षा सहयोग काफी व्यापक है काफी कॉम्प्रिहेंसिव है उसके कई महत्वपूर्ण भाग हैं उस पूरे हर भाग को अगर आप देखेंगे तो उसमें जो नया भाग जिस पे हम काफी आ, 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 काफी जोर से केंद्रित हैं वो है कि किस प्रकार भारत तथा यूएस के रक्षा औद्योगिकी से जुड़े हुए जो कंपनीज हैं वो किस प्रकार से एक दूसरे के साथ अपना द्विपक्षीय सहयोग अपना द्विपक्षीय सहकार बढ़ा सकते हैं दूसरा रक्षा के क्षेत्र में जो दोनों देशों के बीच में इंडस्ट्रियल सप्लाई लाइन लिंकेजेस हैं इंडस्ट्रियल प्रोडक्शन इकोसिस्टम्स हैं वो किस प्रकार से एक दूसरे से बात कर सकते हैं और उसका मुख्य उद्देश्य मुख्य तात्पर्य यही है कि किस प्रकार से भारत यूएस रक्षा सहयोग एक इंडस्ट्रियल प्रोडक्शन इकोसिस्टम की तरफ बढ़े जिससे न केवल दोनों देशों के रक्षा सहयोगों को बल मिलेगा अपितु जो वैश्विक परिपेक्ष है उसमें भी दोनों देशों के रक्षा संबंध एक अच्छी प्रगति कर सकते हैं मुख्य रूप से रक्षा को लेके ये प्रश्न है the question from times now and i think you also had similar question which is the uh, the g20 and the ceos meeting uh, prime minister as i mentioned in my remarks will interact with uh, a prominent cross section of personalities while he is in us both in new york and in washington dc uh, this would include uh, some prominent ceos also these meetings will be in multiple settings uh, as and when these meetings take place uh, the substantive discussions of those meetings uh, what exactly is sought uh, what exactly is achieved and sought to be achieved during this meeting we would share with you as we as we go along uh, see on the g20 uh, india's presidency uh, in the g20 uh, has already been um, uh, quite remarkable and unique. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, I may be factually sort of slightly uh, off the mark here, but to my recollection, uh, this would perhaps be the first presidency which has taken G20 out really from the capitals to uh, all over the country. I mean, we have had already roughly what... Uh, 140 odd meetings spread pretty much all over India. The, 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 the number of venues in the cities and um, uh, places in the country that we have used is, 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 is just uh, uh, shows uh, the extent of commitment that India has to ensure that G20 travels uh, far and wide within the country. Uh, naturally, when uh, the Honorable Prime Minister meets with uh, the U.S. leadership, President Biden, 
the focus on what uh, India is trying to do in its G20 presidency, especially with regard to priorities, interests, and concerns of the countries of the global south, that large chunk of global south that actually remains unrepresented in the G20, for which the Honorable Prime Minister uh, also held, if you would all remember, the Voice of Global South Summit in January this year. Uh, the idea is to uh, put that on the table and uh, put that on the table with the importance that it deserves uh, in terms of being included onto the G20 agenda. Naturally, in that, the interest of the uh, African countries, which represents a large section of the Global South, are important and they would feature in the honorable discussions, uh, discussions between the honorable prime minister and the president. The uh, uh, need to, I guess. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll come to that. I think, uh, uh, Smita, if I could just come to your question on the on the U.S. Congress, uh, planned protests, Myanmar, uh, and the situation in Myanmar. Look, when Honorable Prime Minister travels abroad, uh, all uh, aspects of uh, his visit, uh, including those uh, that pertain to uh, safety, security, and other administrative arrangements are made duly by the appropriate agencies. And I'm sure they will do you know, what is required to be done. We don't comment on, on those aspects of uh, uh, the arrangements of the Honorable uh, Prime Minister. Uh, you talked about, uh, you referred to uh, some planned communications uh, uh, that, according to your information, uh, might come. Uh, I would uh, position uh, this uh, slightly differently. I would say that we look at this visit uh, from a very different frame of reference. Uh, I mentioned in my remarks that uh, we sense deep and widespread positive interest in the U.S. on the visit. We are aware, uh, evidence-based, aware of the positive things we have done in the relationship. Three, we are determined and targeted to uh, uh, move to the new domains of strategic partnership, uh, which are crucial not just for partnership between our two societies, uh, two countries, two systems, but which would also be uh, a positive, net positive contributors to the developments in the world. Five, the, uh, the extent of enthusiasm across the various cross-sections of the uh, U.S. system is palpable. Uh, uh, I don't write the media news. You guys write. Uh, you uh, can well see that uh, spread over the pages of the media uh, uh, for yourself and determine what is the frame of reference in which uh, the two systems are looking at the relationship. So we look at the relationship from that frame, not from any other frame. Uh, the Myanmar question. Uh, I really cannot, uh, it's not correct for me to prejudge what the two leaders will speak in their discussions, but uh, uh, it, uh, uh, it would be natural to expect that uh, the regional and the global situation will come up for discussion. Uh, during that, uh, as I said again, uh, it is not correct for us to frame the agenda of discussions between the two leaders in that sense. But on Myanmar, I think uh, our position has always been very clear. Uh, and the U.S. side appreciates that position. Uh, let's not forget that we have a large uh, uh, border with Myanmar. Uh, uh, Myanmar is our neighbor. The kind of uh, 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 framework in which we deal with our relationship in Myanmar is very different. We have continued 
with our uh, extensive humanitarian assistance and development cooperation with Myanmar, um, even during the times that uh, Myanmar was uh, uh, troubled, so to speak. Uh, so from our perspective, uh, we are our position on Myanmar has has always been very clear. We we uh, being a neighbor, we always try, we wish, and we make an effort in that direction that the country remains peaceful and stable. Uh, but Myanmar is our neighbor, and we, as a result, have continued with our, uh, as I said, humanitarian uh, assistance, development partnership, capacity building programs, etc., uh, with Myanmar. Uh, the event at the Kennedy Center is uh, organized and uh, supported by many organizations. Uh, um, uh, it includes a cross-section of uh, associations in the U.S. that are working to ensure that the Kennedy Center event is successful. Um, to my understanding, uh, that particular event uh, would include uh, business leaders from across the different sections of the society, uh, young entrepreneurs, uh, 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 that's an important segment of our partnership. Uh, think tank members from uh, across uh, the, the United States, the uh, young Indian Americans, uh, uh, Indian American leaders. So it's a, it's a more uh, cross section of the of the uh, of the participants that would be uh, that would be in that Kennedy Center event. Uh, Reagan Center event, which you refer to, is the uh, is the is organized by the community. Uh, uh, let me just add a word, which I had a chance to share with some of the friends from the media. That uh, you know, and I mentioned it in my remarks. Uh, the Indian community, Indian diaspora in the United States, is is really one of the uh, strongest anchors of the relationship, if you were to say, uh, and also uh, drives it, gives it that uh, a crucial uh, a positive substance and momentum, the relationship. Uh, and as a result, uh, you would have noticed that Honorable Prime Minister have always <clears throat> uh, given it a, a top importance to interface uh, with the community leaders. Um, the settings have kept changing. Uh, the parts of the U.S. have kept changing, uh, but the uh, the enthusiasm, the energy, the uh, the the dynamism of the community uh, uh, is is something which is very dear uh, and is a top priority for uh, the honourable prime minister and. Uh, he, 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 he makes it a point to, uh, to connect with that, uh, uh, that critical segment of our relationship, which is what he would do at the Regan Center also. Uh, on, the, on, the, on the NATO question, which was kind of, uh, I think our external affairs minister has already sort of clarified our uh, position on this, and uh, I think he has said uh, this is not a, a template that suits us. So I don't want to add anything more to that. Do you have any other? Thank you, sir. Um, Kalul, I want to say come back to. So Kalul Patachaji from the Hindu. Uh, my question is regarding the Global South. Uh, when we held, when you held the the Global South summit earlier this year. The impression that we got was that India is the leader of the global south. When you held me? I mean, when you mean the government of India, that is. All right. <laughs> I thought you, uh, when you said we to you quickly, I was a little surprised. So when the government of India organized the, south, the global south meeting, I got the impression, or we got the impression that India is the leader of the global south. Now that you are pitching for the leadership and the inclusion of the African Union, in G20, and also saying that the Global South is not represented at G20. Um, are you indicating that you don't want to shoulder the responsibility of the Global South, and that you want to divide the responsibility of leading the Global, global South 
uh, with other members okay of the okay hold on um uh, sorry i normally don't interrupt a question but this one sounds more towards a thesis question i uh, it has to be specific to prime minister's visit to the us um maybe we'll have one response indirectly but i i'm not sure what you meant i couldn't understand it parishit so on the sir parikshit from cnbc uh, on the question of critical and emerging technologies there's been some very intense negotiations between india and us on semiconductors uh, even the us nsa had said that there will be a big announcement on chips so could you give us a sense of one pause this... pause us nsa said that you know asking us you know asking him no, no, <laughs> which way is this conversation i want to ask if there is a private sector investment that will be announced okay. and if there is a collaboration between india and us on semiconductors between the industry and government uh, what will that entail sir okay abhishek so abhishek kapoor from republic tv uh, us nsa in fact in tokyo mentioned that uh, in some ways uh, the india us relationship is now more important than the us china relationship a week before that we had kurt campbell uh, advisor on uh, indo pacific saying that uh, the india us relationship is going to take an escape velocity what kind of orbit we are looking at i just wanted to understand the new delhi view these kind of words coming in from the us establishment really the red carpet how does india see uh, the trajectory going is there a 10 year plan 20 year plan neeraj no no sir neeraj who news at in india say pradhan mantri ke daure ke dauran america rashtrapati se chin aur pakistan ke sandarbh mein kin kin maslon pe charcha hogi bahut general question anyway theek hai shunjay all the time you know had a question but anyway i'll give you shunjay so very specifically will the indo pacific particularly the increasing american deployment in the south china sea area and also in the ior and also uh, cross border terrorism will those issues come up in the three meetings pm is having with president biden last question of this round i think behind you yeah john ft yeah thank you for the briefing um i'm not sure i'm going to get anywhere with this but if it was possible to get the names of some of the companies whose um ceos the prime minister will be meeting with that would be amazing i i think uh, fancy to answer that question we'll we'll share that with you closer to the date it's still a few days ago but i'll let fancy to answer so i can hand over the mic thank you first of all to the question from kalo i think we organized uh, there is no you or me in this we organized uh, prime minister hosted the uh, voice of global south summit uh, look i'll i'll just repeat what arindam said uh, i mentioned about the global south in the g20 context uh, and what i said was that the priorities concerns and interests of the global south uh prime minister if this issue comes up for discussion we'll speak about those we have spoken about those and we have spoken very extensively about those and we have tried to include as much of those priorities as we can uh into the g20 agenda uh naturally we uh, as part of the g20 presidency we focus on priorities that are essentially development oriented that fit in well with the ecosystem of developmental priorities of other countries but having said that we do realize that countries of the global south have their individual concerns interests and priorities and it is only fair to include at least those priorities interests and concerns where membership may not be represented in the g20 setting that's the reference i was making to in response to the question that came up uh parikshit uh, uh, to your question on the semiconductors and uh, what exactly it entails look i will position what india and us are trying to do in the field of semiconductors in the field of telecommunications in the field of Uh, entire set of uh, technologies that fall in the rubric of critical and emerging technologies uh, and sometimes these are not just technologies per se they are associated services there are associated uh, um, uh, uh, technology templates that that move with it uh, 
the entire uh, uh, rubric of those discussion naturally focuses on what the industry on both sides what some of the research institutions on both sides can collaborate on the uh, options are extensive the discussions are uh, uh, again uh, wide and deep uh, and what uh, comes out of these discussions in terms of specific achievements as i said we will share with you as we as the as the program of honorable prime minister's visit unfolds uh, uh, but we uh, one thing is very clear that uh, the technology relationship uh, between india and the us uh, is a very uh, is a very rich uh, segment of our partnership and that is a segment on which we are looking to make substantial progress in months and years ahead including focusing on some of the technologies that you mentioned there are others also which are there there was a tangent to the defense industrial related technologies also which which feeds into the same matrix uh abhishek ji uh, your question on uh, what the us nsa said what kurt campbell said what does it mean etc look it means what i said in my remarks there is a deep and widespread interest uh, in the honorable prime minister's visit to the us uh, there is a, a extensive government wide effort on both sides uh, to uh, to enrich the relationship further by by including some of the uh, key areas of cooperation technology you know obviously from the set of question is featuring very prominently in that uh, that's what it means uh, it is uh, intent objective interest all comes together uh in a in a uh, in a visit which or on on which everybody is very uh, excited um neeraj uh, ji jaise maine pehle bhi kaha ke maniya pradhan mantri ji aur uh, us ke rashtrapati aapas mein varta ka kya agenda rakhte hain ye to uh, kehna hamare liye sambhav nahi hoga magar uh, क्षेत्रीय और वैश्विक हर वो मुद्दा जो महत्वपूर्ण है दोनों देशों के दोनों देशों के परिपेक्ष में उस हर मुद्दे पे समय अनुचित जो है समय की उपलब्धि के अनुचित बातचीत होगी लेकिन किस स्पेसिफिक विषय पे बात होगी या नहीं होगी वो कहना जो है मेरे ख्याल से मुश्किल होगा uh i will uh, enjoy you know your question i'll partly link to what neeraj also asked uh, which is the indo pacific uh, you refer to the cross border terrorism issue uh, there are other challenges which uh, feature in the larger safety and security domain uh, i would say that as i said you know when the two leaders meet they would obviously focus on things which are of uh, larger strategic importance to them whether they are in the regional context or in the global context but it's not uh, you know that is very uh, is that's for the leaders to decide and for them to discuss and on the fta thing also kya change which is the coc is meeting right? yeah um <laughs> to the question from the financial times as i just mentioned earlier on also uh specific meetings uh, that the honorable prime minister would have with individual ceos and the cross section of prominent personalities we'll share with them as they happen and uh, what happens in those meetings so we are running out of time just take a few last questions just here yeah Hi sir I'm Sidan from CNN News 18 sir we have seen that uh, uh, when cases of separatist groups were increasing in Australia prime minister had intervened and perhaps that has uh, you know made the government to act against those groups can we expect prime minister to flag off the issue of separatist groups in USA because our own consulate was attacked and there was a temple attack attack in Texas so can we have uh, this issue being raised by the prime minister thank you yeah next please सर मैं मनीष हूँ टीवी नाइन भारतवर्ष से 
एक तरफ जहां हम लोग देख रहे हैं कि अमेरिका के दोनों पार्टी के जो कांग्रेस पर्सन हैं वो खुलकर प्रधानमंत्री के आने को लेकर वेलकम स्टेटमेंट जारी कर रहे हैं वहीं दूसरी तरफ देखा जा रहा है कि आईएसआई के टूल किट के तहत खालिस्तानी प्रोटेस्ट हो रहे हो सकते हैं उसकी तैयारियां चल रही है जिससे पीएम के सिक्योरिटी को भी लेकर कंसर्न है और इंडियन अमेरिकन कम्युनिटी के साथ उनका क्लास भी हो सकता है तो क्या आप लोगों ने इसको लेकर कॉन्फिडेंस लिया है जवाब दे दिया था सिक्योरिटी इश्यूज जो मुझे याद पड़ता है स्मिता जी के प्रश्न के उत्तर में इस इस पर्टिकुलर मुद्दे पे मैंने मेरे ख्याल से उचित उत्तर दे दिया माइक्रोफोन uh so i'm shailesh from national defense uh, as foreign secretary i want to know your view about uh, pm modi's visit to uh, us uh, how it would help uh, balancing indo pacific uh, particularly in view of the statement made by mr mike collins that china is a big enemy and uh, state secretary visiting uh, china and had a matter of a meeting with uh, i do china. think we answered the question in detail you're not adding anything new okay huma please I'm Huma Siddiqui from the Financial Express. Just wanted to understand how many agreements will be aimed in Egypt, and if there is any, uh, would there be any announcement related to space and defence cooperation in the Egypt? I can tell you in advance. We will not tell you right now. So uh, please, sir, the floor is yours for the remaining questions. Okay. Thank you very much. Now to your question on the. on the what you referred to uh, you know in your question i have in a, in some ways uh, touched upon this when i answered the question from times now and from nijet that uh, when the two leaders meet the issues of importance uh, by them would naturally be raised and discussed now on the particular question of uh, attack on temples attack on the indian consulate uh, honorable prime minister and indeed uh, the pretty much the uh, entire uh, apparatus of government of india has very strongly taken this up already with the um, with the concerned organizations in the countries where it took place you refer to australia i can tell you that we have done that in other countries also but i think the larger nature of challenge that uh, underwrites uh, such manifestations uh, i think that's a question which is uh, which uh, uh, the two leaders which will probably be uh, among uh, the things on the topmost minds of the two leaders but what two leaders discuss i think i would i would leave it to them but uh, the underlying intent and and the goal of such uh, attacks is something which uh, uh, on which we are concerned and we have shared those concerns very actively and very uh, uh, completely with the organizations of those countries which are involved i think that's we have addressed the specific in general answer that um thank, thank you, you very, very much, much. sir Thank you, um, thank you also, Dr. Asar Said, as well as to Dr. Pradeep Rajpurohit. Thank you all for joining the special briefing. We will continue with our briefings as the visit unfolds. Thank you very much.